you're going to end up injured, snap city, go to hell, nobody will love you, and you'll probably get divorced. What is up, guys? Coach Joe, definitely not in Garage De La Swole. We are in my new crib, and this is the new office. So a lot of great things going on in life. Moved into a new house, so that's why the videos have not been as consistent as we are getting ready to have a baby as well. There's just so many things going on, and it's a new new for me. On top of that, we are building a barn or garage gym on the property. So once that's set up, you better bet I'm going to be documenting that whole journey and process, moving all the equipment in there, and then have a nice establishment for training and also collaborations and future work projects. But we're figuring it out one day at a time. And in this video, I wanted to kind of talk about things that I was terribly wrong with when I started this channel and kind of debunk some of those things with what I thought then, what I think now, and just have some fun with it. Because if we're not making progress from when I started about 10 years ago on YouTube to where we're at today, man, are we having some problems. So let's dive right into it. So as we go back and I'm watching old videos of myself, one of the things I constantly was saying to people is the process of how we build muscle. And you may have heard this, or maybe you still think it, and that's why I'm making this video to hopefully open your mind, take the pill to dive deeper into the matrix and explore some other alternative universes and information that maybe you weren't aware of. But when it comes to growing muscle, what I used to always say to people is when we're in the gym, we're doing our reps and our sets, we're feeling that burn, that burn is actually our muscles breaking down. We are tearing our muscles apart and then as we are sleeping or not in the gym, that's when the muscle is recovering and building back and becoming stronger than it once was. That is actually incorrect. And what I know to be true now is that growth in the muscle comes from mechanical tension. In the past, I always used to think you needed to be in that eight to 12 rep range, where we know now that that's also not the case. So as long as you have mechanical tension and you are close to failure, your muscles will grow. And when we are in that close to failure, right, a lot of mechanical tension, that is when the body produces more myofibers, which then will grow the muscle. So you actually always have the same set muscle. When you train, you produce more muscle fibers and that increases the size of the muscle. Now the next one we're gonna talk about is gonna be rounding your back. So what I thought specifically when it came to the deadlift and more movements that we'll talk about is that when you round your back, you're gonna end up injured, snap city, go to hell, nobody will love you, and you'll probably get divorced. Now here we are today, 2024, we are not in hell, or are we? I'm not in snap city, and I'm happily married. So it ends up being the case that the back is made to flex and extend and to rotate. We are nowhere near as fragile as people probably think we are. And if done correctly, it'll only make you a better and a stronger lifter for your competitions or goals and in life in general. Now the back is made to be resilient. It's made to adapt and overcome. But typically what happens is we hear somebody get injured by rounding their back on a deadlift or a certain exercise, or maybe you've done it yourself and then you develop the fear if you do round your back or the exercise, you're going to get hurt. But that's typically not the case. Usually we get injured because we haven't trained this movement before or gone into that range of motion. We're using too heavy of a weight that we haven't trained in that position and injury typically happens. If you progress the movement properly, you're gonna be okay because that is what the spine is made to do. It is resilient, it's made to adapt and overcome and continue to get stronger. Now what I will say is when it comes to your back, having a neutral spine in something like a squat or a deadlift is going to be more efficient and advantageous to putting you in the most strong possible position for that lift. However, if you were to see myself or possibly you when you go to do a heavy one rep or five rep max deadlift or squat, there tends to be a little bit of spine flexion. And that's okay because over time, we've strengthened our body in that position with tons and tons of reps and training sessions that it's not going to be perfect, right? Nothing in this world is perfect. Do we strive for it? Yes, but it's not gonna happen. At the same time, I can still pull a 700 some pound deadlift with slight flexion of the spine and end up being okay. Now, is it the perfect ideal bar path? Probably not, but 
I'm still going to be okay. I'm still going to lift that weight. And guess what? Over time, I'll get stronger and stronger in that position where, say, my max is now 800 pounds. Well, when I go to pull a previous max of 700 or 750, it'll probably look better than the first time that I did it. Now, to caveat that, there is a time and a place when it depends on the desired result or outcome when we actually do want to have an arch in our back or more of a lordosis of the spine. And that could be for hypertrophy exercises, such as things like the good morning or the stiff leg deadlift, right? When we do that and put our spine into that arched position, it really targets the posterior chain, those hamstrings, those glutes, a lot more than if we were in a rounded position. And to caveat that, there are exercises that you can do with a rounded back position that will get you very strong. And honestly, they have built very big low and mid back muscles, right? That's gonna be your flexion rows, one of my favorite exercises, your Ukrainian deadlifts, or in the sport of strongman, lots of loading events such as atlas stones or sandbags. You are in that hunched over rounded position. And if you do that correctly, you're only gonna build a stronger, more jacked and just bulletproof back. So the main takeaway, I guess, when it comes to a rounded back is to know when and when not to have a rounded back. And if you're starting off by doing exercises that have a more rounded back posture to them, make sure you start light, very light, and maybe do some higher reps with that lighter weight to slowly build yourself up to when you can do heavier sets with more weight and not have any back issues. But do not fear a rounded posture or position and think I'm going to get hurt doing this right away. Understand the exercise, the nature, the desired outcome and program and titrate that appropriately. Now the next topic that I want to talk about is going to be pain and injury. In the past, what I thought is that the pain that I feel equates to the severity of the injury. And what we have found today is that's not the case. And I bet you can relate to this when you've done something in life or in training, you think it's the end of the world. You're like, oh gosh, I just shattered my femur, my ACL has disrupted, my PCL, my DCL. Everything is just crumbling and I'm done. I'm not going to do this exercise again. I'm going to tell my friends it's a terrible exercise and I am just going to wait until this thing gets figured out. I'll probably have to go to the surgeon. He's going to open me up and I'm probably never going to be able to walk right. And what we have found today is that pain is heavily influenced by the biopsychosocial model, meaning that there's the biology of pain, there's a psychology of pain, and then there's a social aspect of pain. So an example I use for pain often is that you and I could step on the same thumbtack in the same place, but the pain could be different for me and it can be different from you. And that depends largely on the biology, the psychology, and the social aspect that we've been around our entire life or in that current moment. So now when I experience pain, whether that's outside the gym or inside of the gym, I have to sit there and take a moment and just take a deep breath, okay? I don't wanna panic, I don't wanna work myself up, I don't wanna work other people up, and I wanna just figure out the solution, which is focus on what I can do versus what I can't do. And I think a lot of people, when they get injured, focus heavily on the negative and the aspects of things that they can't do. When we have that injury, instead focus on how can we work around the problem, okay? How can we still work similar muscle groups and still get our training in instead of just bagging this entire session? Maybe it's a simple reduction of weight. Maybe it's changing the exercise selection or using variations, right, that we can still get some training in. It may not be perfect, but it's better than bagging it completely. And I've been guilty, you know, when I first started training that I would just take a week off from the gym and I actually missed out on a lot of gains I could have got if I just trained around that injury instead of just taking completely off. And usually what happens is when we do train and appropriately train around an injury, it ends up getting better and we end up recovering faster than if we did just take a lot of time off. So the last one this video we're gonna cover is going to be cardio and lifting weights. Now when I, back in the day, thought about lifting weights and doing cardio at the same time, the image in my brain was me running down the road, my knees exploding while also looking like Tom Hanks from Castaway. Now what I know today is that they both can be done, which is crazy, right? It's, it is absolutely mind boggling that somebody can be a lifter and still do their cardio. And to add another layer of the cake, your lifts will still probably continue to improve along with increasing your health metrics and cardiovascular health to keep you alive longer. I mean, this is, Freaking bonkers stuff, guys. I never thought it'd be true, but guess what? 
take the pill and swallow it because it is. The truth is most lifters would probably benefit from some sort of cardio a couple days a week in their training program. Where it becomes tricky is when you want to be an elite lifter and an elite runner or endurance athlete, okay? Something's got to give at some point, but for the 99.9% .9 of people watching this video, chances are it's not going to be you. I'm sorry, there's another pill you're going to have to swallow, okay? We're just training for life. We're training to get better. We're training because we enjoy it, and it's just something that we love to do. And if you add a little bit of cardio it'll probably only make the whole experience a bit better because you can do it longer and you can feel better during your sets because you have a little bit bigger of an aerobic capacity and you can just have a better session. So, like Sam Sulik says, do your damn cardio. So there you guys have it. This is the end of the video, but I appreciate you guys watching. If you did like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and just bear with me as we are moving into this new house. This office is going to slowly start turning back into a good looking lighted studio because that's what the kids want these days there's a lot of great things in the work got some new apparel and kind of like a side brand that i've been working on there's also like i said in the beginning of the video the pole barn gym that's going to be built which will be totally badass i can finally put all my equipment in there use that as my training grounds and also have people over for collaborations and a great workspace and we also have some new dope ass collaborations coming up in the future along with new programs etc so just thank you guys so much for your support of the channel. If there are other myths maybe that you want debunked or if you like this video and want me to make another one because there's probably another 10 things I can list off that I've changed my opinion on over time, drop them down below in the comments section. And if you want programs, feel free to head over to the link in the bio and purchase either a la carte programs or if you want the app, we got the app. If you want one on one, mano y mano programs, I got you covered, dog. Stay a lean, mean, strength, health machine. I'll catch up with you guys next time. Peace.